Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Tim. What's up? What's happening? <laughs> Nothing, man. Just chilling. It's Thursday. Parents' house. Chilling at the parents' house. Got no baby in the background. No noises. Sorry. He doesn't. He doesn't live at his parents' house. Just so we're all on the same page. It's just. He's just utilizing their space. Yeah, we have a nice mahogany desk. Degrees on the walls. It's a, it's a great place to work. Get the get the mind right. <laughs> like I had to define the desk. Maybe <laughs> rich mahogany. Rich mahogany. There are, are many leather bound books. <laughs> <laughs> it's made with real bits of panther, so you know it's good. <laughs> uh, uh, to anyone over the age of 50 who's never seen that movie, just fast forward through this part. You're fine. You're fine. Or go go educate yourself. I had to educate the wife on uh, Zoolander this weekend, actually. No. I had she had never seen Zoolander and uh really? yeah, I had to make it happen. It was fantastic. Oh my gosh. We, uh, our favorite brewery, it's across the street. It's called Southern Swells. They do their main, like their mainstay beer, always have it. It's called Karate in the Garage. <laughs> and so at, at Christmas time, we were watching Step Brothers. And he's like, Do you want to go play Karate in the Garage? And just this light bulb went off in her head. And she's like, oh, They did it after this? I was like, have you sure never did. seen Step Brothers? She's like, no, I have. I just didn't make the connection. I'm like, uh, your world, your world has been opened. I know, I know. Once you get, once you can log a couple of uh, movie lines, it's a whole, it's a whole new world out there. Your whole life. I mean, I could, I could probably communicate solely in, like old Jim Carrey movies, Will Ferrell movies. I got Adam Sandler on my list. Adam Sandler is definitely on that list. Like old ones, Billy Madison, all the old ones. Oh yeah, Billy Madison. You could probably pull a few out of like um, the Longest Yard. Oh, we definitely we pull a lot out of the Longest Deeds. Yard. Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little Nicky too, actually. Surprisingly, Little oh, Nicky is a terrible yes. movie, but there are some fantastic lines in that. They have uh, uh what's who's the Fonz? Uh what's the guy's name that's the Fonz? Oh um fuck. Oh it's uh one of us has to come up with it. It's, Henry Winkler uh, covered in Henry bees. Winkler. That's one of my <laughs> and he and he <laughs> covers them in bees. Oh, it's the it's so funny. What a bizarre, uh, what a bizarre, bizarre movie. Like, yeah, it's just no, strange, Mickey, but... no! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i agree if, once you can communicate in in movie lines wedding crashers phenomenal yeah, cool. quotable movie like just you're gonna pull plenty out of there um i the, the list's probably aggressively list long yeah, yeah that's definitely good. you know what we quoted a lot was hitch with will smith oh hitch is good yeah there's some Kevin good James. quotes some good there's some good quotes in there yeah will smith and kevin james there are there you don't are need to make pizza they got food there <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good uh, so phenomenal good. we need to put like all those movie quotes into this so people can see them we're, we're gonna list all of our movies make people watch them yeah right put them in, we'll some people are gonna watch notes. them and be like these are awful this is terrible why? Yeah. What kind of trash movies are you guys watching? They just don't appreciate well, we start, the art, artistry. We had two of our really close friends over, and they were like, "We started it, and uh, the, his wife did, was just like, what the hell are we watching? This Which is one? terrible.'" And I was like, "Zoolander." And I was like, "No, All right, sorry." I was like, "Well, I'm wa I'm watching it soup to nuts, so you you know you can you can figure it out." And they left like 20 minutes into it. I was like, "Yeah, whatever." What? Terrible. I know. They were like, oh, we got to let the dog out. The dog hasn't gone to the bathroom in a while. I was like, yeah, that's a sham excuse. Yeah, yeah. The dog hasn't gone out in a while. Your appreciation yeah. for excellence in movies has decreased immensely. Yeah, 100%. Derek my C. trust in that person has decreased immense, immensely as well. Instantaneously. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That, it's such, hey, that's a phenomenal do? movie. That's, it was at the gasoline fight, too. No, spoiler alert, but it's an old movie. Gasoline fight, place explodes. She's like, "All right, this is stupid. I'm out of here." I was like, "Come on!" Oh, she missed. 
like the best parts of that movie are, are towards the end like the yeah, best yeah, yeah. like <laughs> he throws the computer out the window <laughs> it's in the computer Hansel's so hot right now <laughs> 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 so hot right now. I have a friend uh, that we say that back and forth. Anytime anything's going on, so hot right now. <laughs> oh, another one that we quote a lot is the town. Funny enough. Yeah, the town's so good the, too. The one line in the town is where uh he goes over to Jeremy Renner. He's I, I'm gonna take it out of context, but he's like, he was like, he was like, hey, he was like, I need your help. Like, I can't tell you where we're going. I can't tell you what we're doing. And you can never ask me, but we're going to hurt some people. Yeah. Jeremy Renner looks at him. He's like, whose cow are we taking? Yeah. <laughs> My buddy always says that to me. Like, what are we going to do? Oh, whose cow are we taking? We're going to go kill some people, beat the shit out of some people. Like, what? <laughs> oh, it's phenomenal. Prepare None of this has anything to do with what we're Actually, yes. This transitions us well into uh, – or <laughs> this doesn't transition us at all, but hey. Uh but hey, what are you do? it's our podcast. <laughs> Speaking of beating the crap out of themselves, Bryson DeChambeau, ladies and gentlemen, to the front of the yeah. list. Always so, on all headlines. Right. I, want, I want your update. I want, I want your version of this because I think this is just a bigger story than it needs to be. Yeah. All I've, all I've read is like he said, I'm, I'm at 90%. I'm not feeling comfortable enough to play in a tournament full bore. So I'm not playing. This weekend at Bay Hill. And everyone's like, oh, he's so selfish. That's essentially all, all I've read. I don't know. Have you read anything further? I've The only thing I've seen beyond that is that the resting is allowing him to get ready for the players. Yeah. And it's March. It's like it's the first week in March. And you have to your your season is the FedEx Cup, right? Ultimately. Yes. Yeah. Like you get healthy now. So that you can play, you're you're not injured in August and September. Who cares about Bay Hill? Exactly. It's a tournament. I mean, that's it's awesome. Like it's a tournament that you can play and win. But it's right. not when like when I saw the selfish thing, I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just a tournament. It's going to be there gone. next year too, and he's qualified for it. It's fine. Yeah. Like he can play next year if he wants to. Yeah. The only thing I'm happy he hasn't done, I don't think, is apologize. Like, yeah, I haven't heard I anything after everyone like started writing all the sh- all the stuff bashing him. Yeah, I, I'm. I have the same problem with Phil Mickelson right now. Like, don't apologize for things you're not actually sorry about. Yeah, you, if you said what you said and that's what you feel, okay. Could you have said it differently? Maybe, but you said it. So, why are you apologizing? I same thing with Rogan recently when he apologized. Like, everyone has to apologize for everything. Right, you don't have to apologize for everything. No, I hate it. And that, so I, I saw Jordan Peterson last week uh, lecture, fantastic oh, lecture. If you ever get the chance, freaking legend. So he, he takes a rule out of his book, right? His his two books are Twelve Rules for Life and then Twelve More Rules for Life. Uh, so this is on the second one. He did do not uh, rule five in the second book. Do not do things that you hate. Yeah, and that's essentially what if you if you're apologizing or taking back something you said that you truly firmly believe in. That's some like that's doing something you hate. That's doing something that makes you yeah. feel internally like not like yourself. You can't do that. Like if you're Bryce and you're thinking, I like I have my I'm young, I have my whole career ahead of me, I have the whole season ahead of me. I need to get healthy and feel hundred percent comfortable yeah. before I play. Dude, you gotta do that. Yeah. And certainly don't do things that other people think you should do. Yeah. Like they don't own your body. Uh, they don't yeah. they don't own your life. They're not you. They they're just Twitter hacks that have to comment and chime in on things that they know nothing about, nor should they. Right. Right. Just, it's just noise. Certainly don't apologize for it. Like, no, no. what, what, what did you do wrong? Oh, I decided not to play in a golf tournament. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Decided to (laughs) focus on making sure I'm not like injured and making something worse. Like, no, okay. That's fair. It's just, it's such a little thing. Like what a first world problem. (laughs) It is. It is. But I'm with Bryson anyways. on this one. Rare, rarely am I like rare, in support rare, of him, but I'm I'm with rare. him on this. I'd be happier if his hat was different, but that's that's just he started wearing just, a uh, regular like a regular hat occasionally. He did, he did. I've seen him. He's got like the Cobra hat that he's been rocking a little bit, but 
yeah. just it's my well, you know Palmer. you know especially at bay hill he's gonna wear the old hat right at arnold you know at arnold palmer sermon he's wearing the old the old style hat he's not gonna be there though no 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 i know but if he was if he was oh general yeah like if he was there you can guarantee probably... like if that was if that's a side bet on like uh, i don't know whatever app you use my bookie yeah bet the house yeah Oh yeah, bet bet the house on that, and probably going to be corduroy. <laughs> <laughs> corduroy with an umbrella makes like a vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's Fantastic. probably true. I haven't looked at any of the good. There's probably some awesome prop bets right now on the players. I'm sure Bay Hill's got a oh, bunch yeah. too. But I love I love the prop bets on on some of the golf tournaments because you're right it's like people wearing hats you know what color shoes are they going to be wearing oh yeah that's fantastic there are some there are wow. some awesome ones there you can even like live bet someone's going to three putt this green like i bet, yeah. I bet uh so and so is going to hit fairway and green and regulation on this hole like you can bet crazy shit barstool sportsbook is awesome for that they have random like custom yeah custom books. yeah yeah but i live in florida so they're off the they're off the table Sorry. They're off for now. They're for off now. in mass too. Yeah, yeah they're off now. in mass too. But what are you gonna do? My brother's in Philly. He he uh, might place my bets for me. He might, he might not. He might not. You never know. You know, yeah, there's Good nothing right now greatest. available that um there's nothing on here right now. However, we do have yeah. NCAA hoops coming up. Yeah, and that's gonna be that's gonna be big time. I'm pretty I'm pretty yeah, especially about. with all the all the top seeds uh, losing this weekend. Like seven this of the top weekend. nine. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, amazing. Seven of nine. Amazing. 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 Yeah. I took, uh, I had Tennessee in the, in the games this weekend. It was terrific. There With Tennessee fan, but I just, I didn't like Auburn. I was like, yeah, they're at home. They beat Arizona at home. Beat Kentucky at home. Got this game. Boom. Boom. Game blouses. It's intelligent, it's intelligent bl- uh, betting right there. <laughs> It's lucky betting. <laughs> uh, it's so true. When does this uh, USFL thing start? This US football. I don't know. Thing? I've only heard, I've only heard one. It's the NFL supporting it, isn't it? Like the Rock. It, oh well, no. The XFL in the Rock are the ones that it, I saw something about them where like the Rock is going to make the XFL a testing ground for rules, or is that the USFL? No. I, okay, so the inaugural season starts on April sixteenth. With the New Jersey Generals and the Stallions. Do you think they last more than three weeks this time? I think they probably do. They've got some good coaches, man. Yeah? And let me tell you something. There's some legit players. So, uh, Shea Patterson from Michigan Mm. was drafted. Um, Who was – all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got our quarterback – Jordan Tayamu, kid from Ole Miss. All uh, right. So these are just people that were like second fiddle to the NFL? Like I'm I'm assuming so. Up. The stars back select up, so. Bryson Scott from Occidental College. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, he he threw at USC's Pro Day. Interesting. Jimmy Rollins. In command, welcome to the squad, Ben Holmes, Tarleton State. I have no idea where Tarleton I mean, that State just is. Get, that gets me going. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> ben Holmes. Tarleton State. Let's go. Yeah, that's, that's the Tarleton State guy. Michael Strahan announced Ben Holmes joining the Generals. Houston Gamblers, Clayton Thorson from Northwestern. All right. Okay, I mean they've got some names. I mean it's not like these are these are nobodies. Alex McGoff from FIU. All right. Can the the uh, thing is can the teams can the team sustain it? Like can they keep their payroll going and shit? I mean. Oh, Kyle Laletta, kid from University of Richmond. Oh, yeah, from him. Richmond. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. All right. How about that? All right, nice Kyle Stoller. He's from. Slaughter, Slaughter, Northern Colorado. Oh yeah, he wasn't he on like, the Vikings or something uh, preseason early on. Uh, he was on a team. He was on a team preseason. Slaughter. Kyle Slaughter, go Blue Wave, the New Orleans Breakers. Hell yeah, Drew, that's Drew it. Brees. 
Chewy Breeze. I don't know about that the... name. The New Orleans Breakers. That's a little. Is it too soon from Katrina? I don't know. First round pick by pick and out. I, I got nothing. Time, draft order, selection, <laughs> uniform reveal, inaugural play, inaugural playoffs to be played in Canton, Ohio. Ooh, Hall of Fame, the home of football. Did you, do you know how fun it's going to be to bet on the USFL? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be chaos, right? It'll just oh, like- complete, complete and utter disasters. Like, who's going to have three fumbles today? Right, ten, nine missed field goals. So like this team only got to the forty-five, and the kicker missed every field goal. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so fantastic! I have no idea, but how on earth did we go right. from Bryce into the USFL? I don't know, but hey, doesn't matter. April sixteenth, if you want to tune in, I guess you can. I guess you can watch some football. We should. We should put our. We should put our odds on here every week for the coming weekend USFL? games. <laughs> USFL. Two picks, what like one best pick and then one uh, underdog every week. Yeah, I think we should do that. We should do like uh, we should do a money line pick, like one money line pick every week, and then one like super underdog pick. Super. That's dog. just like like you have to take the dog, and it's got to be when they're like a six point dog at least, or like a like a touchdown yeah. dog. Yeah, big time. I like All right. that. All right, we're doing that. People hold us to that. I'm April sixteenth. We're going to do those, and then we're also going to do whatever the golf tournament is the following week. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so I had I had burger last week, which was fantastic for two days, and then just literally slowly killed me over the next two days. Yeah, slowly? What was he? Uh, it, was a, it was a slow burn because it was every putt. You're watching four. every putt. Like, is this going to be the one he makes? Nope. Is this going to? Nope. Yeah, dude, he fell, he fell apart. And then poor Lowry gets to 18 and the sky unloads on him. Yeah, right. Oh, dude, brutal. Absolutely Kitty, brutal. Did you see Kitty Yama standing there? He was just kind of waiting, and they were like, uh, they're like, are you gonna hit? He was like, ah, damn, I gotta hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess boring. I, oh, dude, Strzok has got to be sitting there like, yeah, baby, right? yeah. Oh, he must brutal. have. He must have. Poor, poor bastard. <clears throat> it is what it is. Yeah. So we'll do. Uh, we'll do. We'll do some. We'll do some live golf stuff too because we record on Thursdays. We'll have to do like a like a weekend bet or something. Yeah, there's enough live stuff. A lot of I. I don't know too many. Well, I guess if you're doing DraftKings or something, you're doing it before Thursday. But I know a lot of people who are live betting on the weekends, so that's always Why? fun. Yeah, that's always fun. At the very least, the USFL is going to get done. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. I like that. We'll get we'll get Duffy involved in that, right? Yeah, definitely. Do, do you even know what uh, – do you need – like, do they have a day that the USFL plays? Is it like, you know, Sunday football? Is it – Well, what's what's April 16th? Uh, dude, April – you're thinking way too far ahead for me. Saturday. Oh, all right. That's perfect. That's the inaugural. That's the inaugural. Fuck. Did ten bucks? Ten bucks for a game. <laughs> ten bucks? Is there? Do you have to pay for parking? That sounds like minor league baseball. I remember like paying a dollar for parking and a dollar for tickets. It's fourteen sixty five with fees. There we go. Hey, support your local USFL football team. Okay, so the venue is in Birmingham. I want to see what they've got for like tickets. All right, the inaugural game is listed, but that's the only thing listed, and it's on Saturday for tickets right now. I'm sure well, the schedule is. The schedule's got to be somewhere. Well, yes, yeah, if it's Saturdays, that'll be perfect. We'll, we'll release our picks for the following week, nonetheless. Yeah, so we'll have all of our for the weekend for that weekend. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll film and give our picks for the weekend. Yeah, this is gonna make me watch this so much more than I normally would. <laughs> That's the goal, right? I might pick my team oh, based cool. on whose uniform I like the most. Dude, it's it's strange, but it seems to work in like college basketball. You always have that one lady in the office who's makes it to like the top five at least, and she's just picking based off just on how they look. Yeah, just off yeah. how they look. 
Something yeah, to it, I, right? Look good, feel look good, feel good, feel good, play good. I mean, yeah, that's right. Prime time. Prime time. All right. Anyways. All right. So it yeah. is. Well, excuse me. In part of the country, it is becoming yeah. time where you can go outside and play golf. Where I live in beautiful northern Florida, where they will soon have the players' championship. We've been able to play all year round because we can. I've played three times this week. It's been seventy-five degrees all three times. Terrific. But in other parts of the country, like where dumbass lives, no. you haven't been able to play at all outside no. until no. March and April come around and you're able to finally start getting out, even if it's a little bit cold. So we want to talk about some mistakes that we see players, specifically in places that are cold. But I will include places like Florida where some people are like scared to death that it's like 65 degrees out. Um important things to consider when you're trying to get back on the course after having like an off season. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to approach playing and, you know, handling all of that stuff. So I'm going to shoot this to Tim and kind of get his thoughts on this. But the number one thing that I see with my guys prior to when they started working with me is that when they would get into the spring and golf would open back up, they went super hard volume wise for the first month playing three, four, five days a week, 18 holes every time. And they just blew their wad and it was the end of it. Right. And then they are like, Hey, my elbow hurts. My back hurts. This hurts. That hurts. My wrists are a mess. Like I'm so sore. Right. What, what do you, that's what I see the most of, but you know, I'd love to see kind of what your thought is there. No, that's the that's definitely the biggest thing, because up here you'll see I mean, we have a lot of indoor facilities that are decent They're If you live in in the city of Boston, you don't have anything. But if you live in, in the surrounding areas or if you belong to a club, like most of the clubs around here have track, man. Right. So people like people are doing are, are making some swings, but it's more it's more like once a week or once a month or like, you know. At, at some lower frequency, it's not with the same like you're in Ju- it's June and you're playing Saturday and Sunday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, that's the around here. Like last week, we had a 60 degree day. You'll go to any driving range around and everyone's got a large bucket or two large buckets. And they're just they're about to hit 200 balls. And, Die. They pro- <laughs> you know, most of the people just looking at them, they have not done much as far as exercise, movement or golf in a while. Well, it's, it's cold and dreary. What do you? There's nothing else to do yeah. but drink. Hey, man. It's a it's an essential part of staying warm, but you gotta you gotta get in the gym. Listen, you're preaching to the choir here. I mean, I I grew up in Maine. Yeah, they're not touching a golf course for at least a month. Yep, yep. So that you gotta you gotta you know make sure that you're smart about getting back into it especially like up here you won't have <clears throat> excuse me you'll have a lot of like snow melt the ground will be soft can't take carts so now you're yeah. potentially like walking 18 yeah. and maybe you know if it's been cold as hell and we've had a, like six or six inches of snow on the ground for at least a couple of weeks you haven't really been walking outside at all and definitely not walking outside no. and swinging a golf club 100 percent the truth right there Yeah, I think the biggest thing people misinterpret is the fact that the volume that they're about to go through is a lot. Like the first two, first month and a half of people getting back into golf season, I see more tendinopathies at the elbow than anything else. I get my back is sore and my elbows are killing me. Almost every year. It's uncanny. No, that's the first. That's my my uncle. Last year, we played. We started playing every, and we play early in the morning, so it's cold. And like the second or third week, he's like, "Dude, my elbows are killing me. Both of them. I don't know what to do." It's like, well, here we are. You haven't done anything for three months, and huge rip on this. You asked for this. Yep. Yeah, you asked for yep. this. Um, although, so practically speaking, when it comes to approaching the you know, spring ball, essentially, where you're getting back out, you're playing again. There's a couple of things that I recommend to people that have done nothing, right? I would, I would give different recommendations based on what you've been doing. If you've been really active, you've been going to, 
you know, your local indoor range, you've been using a sim, you've been in the gym. My recommendations for you are going to be pretty much go play, still be conscious of it, but like play 18, see how you recover the next day, plan maybe another 18 or nine in a couple of days. Whereas someone who's done zero since the end of October or October, or you've taken like three full months off of golf, part one, if you haven't been active either, like you haven't really been doing a lot of exercise, take a cart for probably the first couple of weeks, right? Then walk nine, right? Then work up to walking 18. If walking is what you do, a lot of people don't want to walk at all. So it doesn't really matter to them. But if you normally walk and you haven't been walking all winter, it's probably a good idea just to let yourself, to Tim's point, if the ground's soaked, it's going to be, you know, cart path only anyways. So you're going to be walking regardless. So I recommend taking a cart for a couple of weeks, play nine holes, walking, do that a couple of times, then progress to 18 or walk the front nine and ride the back nine, you know, however you want to do that. But if you've done nothing, just that amount of walking volume is a lot. Yeah. Shouldn't be. Yeah, no, it's But if you've done nothing, it's a lot. Yeah. No, it's walking a 10K, you know. If you're walking 18, you're essentially walking like at least six miles. So I'm sure it's like 12, what's the average, 12,000 steps? Yeah, Something. it's definitely north of 10. Yeah, the north of 10. I, th- I think it's like the average is like 12,000 steps, regardless of male, female. Um, I think it's roughly around it, which is a lot of mileage. And yes, because you haven't played in three months, you probably suck. So you're going to be walking a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, doing diagonals. You, you'll be walking, covering a lot of the course. Yeah, uh, you'll be you'll be going on. Yeah, that sounds miserable to me. But anyways, so first practical thing, be smart about how much walking you're doing. Second practical thing for all that is holy, stop swinging out of your shoes. Yeah, totally. Especially like in March and April, we can get a lot, we get a lot of wind up here. Um, so on those super windy days, like taking those huge cuts is just not, an, is ill-advised anyways. You know, uh, when, when the breeze kicks up, you always swing with the ease, right? And you just kind of let it, let it rock. Do what it's going to do. Yeah. That's how you got to start it. Tee it up low. <laughs> yep. you. But yep. we we say all of that. That sounds like a silly thing to say. You'd be amazed how many people end up hurting themselves by trying to crush the ball their first couple of times being out of the course. A, they show up and they are cold as ice. It's already yep. probably cold outside. They haven't warmed up. And then they're like, eh, I can swing this thing as hard as I want. You can. You might get away with it a couple of times. But at the end of 18 holes, you'd be amazed how exhausted your body is from – doing something it hasn't done in months. Totally. And that's, you know, that's if you're not doing anything, even if you are do like a lot of people have bought speed sticks and they're just doing those in their backyard or in their garage or whatever. I mean, swinging that thing as fast as you can in your garage with no, you have no real target to hit, right? You don't have a ball. You're just kind of like swinging in the air. I mean, that, that type of training has its place and, and its benefits, but it's much, much different than, standing there with a tee with a ball looking out at, at a fairway with some chaos out there with bunkers and trees and whatever's out there yeah. totally different beast and you know again hopefully you're not just going out in your garage and cold cold turkeys taking 20 20 swings with the sp- speed sticks you know they are 100 percent. they are that's, just, that's <laughs> the way it's the way golfers are they're just like ah, i just gotta go out and swing really hard with something a few times yeah well gotta get actually it as quickly as possible Tim just made a good point about even people that have been training, but haven't necessarily been swinging a golf club. So I always use the example with uh, golfers of mine and athletes of mine that when I used to go from season to season, so like I'd play football, like had a full football season. I'm in excellent shape. I'm running all the time. I'm taking contact all the time. I'm cutting the whole nine yards. I get to basketball season and our first day of basketball practice, I feel like someone ran me over with a semi. I'm sore. I'm exhausted and I'm in good shape. I just finished football season like two days prior and I go to basketball practice and I'm like, Oh my God, my legs, my calves, why does everything hurt so bad? So even if you have been training, when you go to do something that your body isn't necessarily super used to, 
there is a chance that you're going to be sore. So you need to somewhat, you know, you're not avoiding that, but don't act as if it's unexpected. Yeah. And you've got different, like in your example, you've got football and basketball, right? So you've got two different surfaces. You're on, you know, yeah. grass or turf, whatever, whatever you play it on. I assume grass at a high school. So it's softer, uneven. Then you've got hard, you know, whatever it is in basketball, whether it's rubber or hard, hardwood, it's a hard surface. It's more short, quick movements. I, I used to go from cross country to basketball. That was tough. Cause you've got a great, you've got a great engine, but you don't have the, the start stop. So like my knees would be sore for a couple of weeks. Cause you're just not used to the, all the change of direction and, and impact. So you, you have to, you know, just keep that in mind. doesn't help that you were like 106 pounds soaking wet at the time. <laughs> yeah, I know I cracked. So this is embarrassing, but I cracked the hundred pound mark at, in my sophomore year of high school. <laughs> the hundred pound mark. Oh yeah, dude. I gained, uh, 30 pounds the summer after my freshman year. Wait, like you were 70 pounds. Weights. Yeah, dude. I was like, I was like 75 and I went to one Oh five. Yeah, dude. Crazy weightlifting, man. Weightlifting. Weightlifting. All you had to do was eat. I dude, I ate, I eat. What did you eat? I eat. Like friggin', I eat everything. Like bird food. <laughs> <laughs> that is water pure. and bird food. I had no idea that you had gained. Oh hell yeah, dude! The last time I was a hundred and five pounds, I must have been. Gosh, I can remember in eighth grade I was one forty. Damn. Yeah, I mean that's a normal think... size kid though. You're what five seven or something at that time? Five six. I was probably around. I was I was relatively tall. I was I didn't grow any taller from the time I was a maybe a sophomore in high school. That's the last time that I grew. I was six, yeah. three and I haven't moved Damn. since then. I've gained a bunch of weight since then, but I haven't yeah, yeah, been. Yeah. yeah. I think when I graduated, I was a buck 90, buck 95 when I graduated high school, my first year of college football, I bumped to like two sixteen. Now yeah. oh, yeah. to be fair, that was mostly because of unlimited food at the dining hall. <laughs> There was probably a little chub on me. Yeah, not mom's cooking, not the not the good, you know, good stuff. There was nothing nutritious. I was basically going for like, did they have grilled cheeses just on deck? All oh, I was just hammering grilled cheese and like oh, pasta. Yeah. Well, dude, just the food was so good, and it was just all paid for. So you're just like, yeah. Well, and if this, you had lifted, you had been in practice for a couple hours, then you're, you're good to go, man. Just chow down, whatever. Well, Fill the you tank. think you're good to go, but like late night, you're you like, do. yeah, I could I could do like a cheesecake right now. Walk over <laughs> to the dining hall, get a little late night cheesecake. They'd have some like buffalo tenders. Oh, it's fantastic. But I turned into a whale for a moment. <laughs> Anyways, I'm super Anyways. large tangent there. Anyways, back to not golfing like an asshole come this spring. Yeah, Tim, you had something. Change, I right? could see it. You could see it. No, see yeah, it things, things, things. Yeah, things just changed. So you got to you got to ramp up for the spring. I I have a guy uh, at the gym I'm working at right now with Duffy. He's uh, like a scratch golfer, and he's the he's kind of weird, but he says he does all he does the stretching, and it's not exactly what I would advise advise someone to do, right? But he says like for years he starts it in January and he does these stretches for three months. And he gradually limbers up and then he's got the golf season and golf has in, historically kept him in shape. Now we've got him on a full strength and conditioning program. Uh, he's, he's lifting some weights and he's doing the right stuff, but he had the right idea, right? Like he was, he was yeah. picking a date. He didn't continue it the rest of the year, but he was picking a date, getting his, getting his body ready. And then he knew he was ready to go day one and he could handle the season. It's the same way that we approach even things like conditioning with athletes. Like when you, yeah. when you talk about like double sessions in the fall for a lot of, you know, football, soccer, baseball, whatever sports you're playing. One of the reasons that we do that is to build your aerobic capacity from a starting position anyways. And that can take a few weeks to develop, but there is a starting point to when we start developing that more. Whereas, you know, the problem with golfers is that we don't, I say we, most golfers don't plan their year around golf. Right. You see it a little bit more up north because there's an off season like that's built in because it's snowing, essentially. 
right? Which is a, it's kind of a perk in some ways. Um, Cause we yeah. may focus on developing strength a little differently or power a little bit differently in that off season window between October and now. Whereas when you start the season up, maybe we temper some of those things based on how much golf you're playing during the week, even in my own training right now, like, because I'm playing golf at a higher volume, like my workout days are, are changing a bit because of that. Cause I, I might yeah. not devote that fourth or fifth extra day in the gym because I want to go play golf right there. There's kind of a balancing act of how much am I in the gym versus how much am I golfing and where do I find that happy medium? And everyone is different for some people. That's twice a week. For some people that's five days, four days, three days. It, it depends on you. Um, but it is important that we, we consider that when you're coming into spring right now is what should your training look like now that you're getting back into golfing, right? What are you doing to mitigate injury? What are you doing to improve mobility? If you've done nothing for three months, not only are you stiffer, you're weaker. Yeah. hundred percent. There's no, there's no way around it. I'm curious what, so what, how do you, how are you doing your schedule right now? I know uh, you have a coach for your programming and then, yeah, Are you, do you know Flag's your guy. John? Yeah, John Flag, the man, the man, the myth, the legend. Shout out, shout out, Rebuild Stronger online, John Flag. Go check him out if you, you know. like picking up heavy ass shit, which I used to do once upon a time. I was powerlifting. I was just real getting strong. big. Uh, I, t- I was a tank. This is actually before John when I competitively powerlifted. Oh my gosh, I was like two forty five, two thirty. I, like, I was a tank. Big boy, I was, big boy. I was, dude, I was, I was big. I was eating like Chipotle twice a day. So my Chipotle order, calories. Chipotle order right here, okay? Wrap, double tortilla, double yes. wrap, okay? Double chicken, double rice, cheese, lettuce, salsa, side of chips and avocado, side of chips and guac. Sheesh. Two times a day. That's insane. How much does that was, cost? That's a hundred dollars a day? No, 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 dude. I was spending like 30 bucks a day. All right. That, that's not terrible. Up here at Chipotle is expensive. I don't know what that do they charge you extra for like a double wrap and stuff? I I, I had my people there, bro. You always got I, a guy. You always have a some, guy. I knew some people. I knew some people. But yeah, I was <laughs> I was there. Anyways, shout out John. Read anyways, stronger. Uh, yeah. He's a G. Shout so my schedule, John. my schedule right now, what I'm changing it to anyways, because golf for me is typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Um, yep. right now, because that's just convenient for me. And we're getting once we change the clocks ahead, it doesn't get dark down here until eight. So yeah, that's you know, perfect. and that's the earliest. So, you know, you can tee off at four or 4.30 yeah. and get 18 holes in, depending on where you're playing. So for me, my schedule is probably going to look a little bit more lift probably three days a week. They might be a little bit more aggressive lifts, but lift three days a week, two days at least of like some harder conditioning. One day that might be like a lighter, um, like less training or low intensity steady state, or I'm just getting something mm-hmm. that's getting me a little bit longer. And one day might be a little bit harder. And probably two of those three workouts will have some kind of, aerobic finisher um like nice. treadmill sprints or tread sprints or something like that but three days will be excuse me lifting um or resistance training as a whole uh that's that's essentially where my training is is heading right now which is great um because that means i'm playing golf more which is a huge pro yeah. but at least getting out twice a week ideally three days a week and then you know my training kind of revolves around that um, thankfully I'm not really in a situation where I need to get massively stronger for golf. Like obviously I want yeah, to be stronger. You're strong enough. I'm strong yeah. enough. And I mean, I've got people that are your size that outdrive me all the time because I'm just not mechanically as sound in a lot of ways as, yeah. as most people, but I've, I've improved a lot, but you know, as my focus is much more mechanical than most people just because I'm strong enough to hit the ball a long way. It just doesn't mean that I can, or I am hitting the ball a long way. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like you probably hit your irons farther than I do. Yeah. And that's where like uh, experienced golfers benefit more from like the strength training. Cause they've got the technique down. Whereas you've got 100%. the strength. You, you're, you need more of the technique work, which is what you're working on. You know, 100%. So that's, I'm, 
Yeah, just ask because I've learned the hard way, like mixing. So I used to be a very, like probably a year and a half ago, I will not miss a workout. So I'd like I've uh, three yeah. or four times and then I'm done. I was like, I had yeah. just had a heavy leg day scheduled on Friday. I had a Saturday morning tea time. And it, it took like two really shitty rounds to just be like, all right, ne- just never do that again. Because you just have, then you're sore, you're a little sore, you're tight, you have no legs because they're tired from the like the afternoon before or the day before. 100%. It's just so stupid. So you got to definitely have to plan, plan those days out. 100, 100% the truth. And I actually, this is completely personal to me. And some clients of mine feel this way as well. I function way better with time between my lift days. Yeah, definitely. It's just, just me. Like I'm amazed, but I'm going to, I'll speak about this strictly physically. I feel like I look and feel better with a couple of days between heavy lifts. I say heavy lifts, yeah. lifting days. Yeah. You know, like I, I tend to be more along the lines of like a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday lifting schedule or like a Monday, Thursday, Saturday lifting schedule, depending on what my third day of playing golf is. Um, Having a little time off in between does allow your body to recover um, a little more than it might otherwise. And that is all person dependent. You know, you're going to have like the David Goggins of the world who are like, there is no such thing as recovery. Die. (laughs) Die. Every day. Your body should break. Bleed bleed and you know sometimes there's a place for that maybe not the bleeding part but it does matter especially for those of you getting into lifting or playing golf this spring how you're recovering like is your body getting enough time to recover because walking 18 holes for you might be a huge strain like for any of you that have whoop straps which a lot of people do now walking 18 holes can be like depend especially if it's like hilly and stuff you might get up yeah, to like an eleven, up. like an eleven strain, a twelve strain. Like oh, you yeah. could get at least. Like I mean, I've done that a couple of times where I'm like, oh my god, my max heart rate was like 153. What the hell was I doing? Yeah, I know. Walking up a hill with your bag on your back, you you can get your heart rate up there pretty good. Oh, there's there's no question, no question about it. So that definitely can happen, and so it's it's important to to recognize your recovery as you start getting into golf this spring, because people think of it as such a, like a non athletic sport where it's not exhausting. It's not tiring. You walk 18 holes with your bag on your back. Yeah. It's going to be tiring. And if you're swinging a golf club, especially if you're swinging it fast, it's going to make a difference. Yeah. Or you're swinging it a lot. If you're playing bad and you're swinging it a lot, I mean, Hey, you get tired. That's a hundred percent. And then you get frustrated and there's so many other combinations of things. Terrible. Different spirals. Yeah, that's so. I yeah, I like and my people up here. We we emphasize Duffy and I have, at RPS. Like this is your general. Like th- we're wrapping up right now. Just your general physical fitness, right? Your physical just preparedness. GPD. Yeah. You just like the you take a maybe end of the golf season. Sit up here. We could play until like late November, right around Thanksgiving. So yeah. say you take a couple weeks and just let yourself relax. After that, you hit and sometime December, January, you start up doing some stuff in the gym. You start getting strong. And then now we're starting to like people are coming to the end of some of their phases, getting into a little bit more like we know they're going to be going to the range more and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, be getting into more of that like golf specific skill specific stuff where we're keeping, you know, we're keeping the weightlifting going, but it's not we're not trying to crush the soul at all. We don't want to be sore after our workouts at this point, you know, in April and May. You don't want to be really sore after your after your gym sessions. Right. And we can talk to Duffy about this whenever we have him pop on the hub yeah. on the hobcast on the podcast. But I am a huge lover of getting higher, I'm gonna say higher volume, higher amounts of power work in the beginning mm. of the season. So like we've gotten this big base of strength and now we're transitioning to like strength speed a little yeah. bit more as they start getting towards it. Because again, from an exhaustion standpoint, it's not tiring. But we're just right. starting to, as they start getting to when they're about to play, I like getting a little bit more, you know, violent med ball work or depending on how old they are, sprint work, a little bit more mm-hmm. jump work. Um, it doesn't have to be high volume, but like one of my favorite things, and we can talk to, I love doing this with golfers and with athletes as a whole, is I pick a plyo 
pair it up with whatever their strength movement is. So if it's, you know, yeah. a goblet squat, heavy goblet squat, I might have them do three vertical jumps. They might all be reactive or they might be resets. Go right to a goblet squat that's heavy. Like you're going to yeah. do like yeah. a set of five or six, maybe sometimes seven or eight, because sometimes getting a goblet up can be heavy or a back squat for that matter. Um, or front squat or whatever squat variation we have. And that is your main part of that day. Maybe two accessory lifts. Done. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I did I did something similar yesterday. I did uh, barbell bo like back squat to a box. And then I did triple jump on each side. So I did, you know, jump on the uh, on the right foot right. twice, jump and land on the left, and then the opposite. Fun fact. Uh, it was great. Went to States in high school for triple jump. Ooh. Mind you, I was, in, I was in the state of Maine. It's something to say about football. Like, shout out state of Maine. I love, I love the state of Maine, but we're not exactly the mecca of athletes in the U.S., right? Well, so you got some big people up there, though. You got some big boys. Yeah, but Maine we're not like we're not like we're not far. Shit. In the we're best not, possible way. In the best possible way. We're not. <laughs> we're not farm animals. But like, no, but you got some good wholesome people. Yeah. Like, that, but, that's I like mean, there, don't get me wrong. In, there are there are some good athletes. <laughs> I was in Madison. There are just some like big, big people. Like, I, I remember this one dude in the hospital who was an orderly. He just like pushed a gurney around. He looked like an he could play line for any, any NFL team. Like, he was like six five, two fifty. It was just like holy crap. Put it like this, my starting dude. my starting center in high school was like uh two hundred and five pounds. Damn. Yeah, we didn't have like big, like giant human beings. So when I say that I made something, yeah. like, yeah, like <laughs> hey. that's cool. But like, if I was in like Miami, I, I yeah. would have been like, I would have been the water boy, like scrubbing. Duval County. Yeah, no, like Derrick Henry was I playing know. linebacker, <laughs> yeah. or in running back. Like, no, like right. I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not keeping up with that stuff. But, anyways, yeah, triple jump. Yeah. It's fun, here. dude. Triple jump is fun, isn't it? Like you, you know, you got to get the rhythm of it. You got to get the timing down, and it, dude, it was it hard. Makes I it, it makes a makes a boring thing fun, you know. And it's like when you really learn how to do it, like timing your steps. Like I'd have to like walk my steps out, sprint my steps, yeah. and then in my head I'm keeping track of like okay, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, pop, pop. Hey. <laughs> You're like you do the whole like your arms are back, your legs are back. You're like you look like you're like snap possessed it by something, and then you snap it forward and like barrel roll. Yeah, it was pretty. Awesome. Get it. totally pitted, pitted, just pitted, just pitted, brah. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. So uh... Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, we'll definitely have to talk about that. I, I like doing the same thing, front loading it, and then keeping it going through the year, but uh, at a at a lower volume. For sure. Yeah, I like I like putting power work. I'm not necessarily that it has to be uh, just off season or just in the beginning of the season. Like throughout the year, I am always fluctuating cycles of yes. certain amounts of power work. But it also depends on the athlete. How are they recovering? How are they not recovering? Like the RPE scale is so clutch for me, especially yeah. with younger people that can put more volume up. When it comes to my older clients, for the most part, it's keeping them moving. It's keeping them strength training, totally. keeping them resistance training. You know, we do have power work that we do, but when they're playing, like I've got people down here playing five days a week, like right, right. their strength sessions can't be exhausting because their bodies just strictly don't want to handle that much volume. But yeah. I may fluctuate different movements in, you know, based on whatever uh, mesocycle they're in uh, or whatever we're at, at that point. But RPE becomes huge, which for anyone listening who doesn't know what RPE is, it just means rate of perceived exertion i.e. how hard is something to do it's it's a one to ten scale that anybody that works with us sees often including people that are in their 60s 70s and 80s um, yeah. because it's a helpful way to to manage weight and volume and reps and how tired you are but for me that's a huge aspect is you know swapping exercises but like hey i want this at an rpe of like six keep it low where you're still getting some strength but we're not overdoing it and then, you know, when you have this big vacation from golf in three months, then maybe I'll increase some of your volumes in X, Y, and Z. 100%. Yeah, I have a, I have a guy last week who uh, has two young kids. One's like a year old and one's three. He just came in one day and he was like, listen, you have, a young, you have, a, you have an infant. It's been one of those weeks where I just 
haven't slept through the night any night this week. So let's just get it. Let's just get it done. I was like, it's all I need to know. Like we're just we're just getting it done today. We're not going breaking any records. We're not going for a max, you know, a, a personal record squat. We're getting it done today, dude. I tell you though, and this is something that anyone who is definitely in powerlifting and weightlifting and like events like that will tell you. I have PR'd my deadlift on multiple times, multiple days where I slept less than four hours the night before. Hmm. No recovery. For what reason? It's like ner- nervous, can't sleep? No, just like I didn't sleep. I, didn't. I just couldn't sleep. Yeah. And that next day, like my lift said to work up to a heavy single. And I'm like working up. And I'm like, oh, man, my body is just killing it. Like I'm tired. I don't feel good. And again, this is just it's anecdotal. Like but a lot yeah, of people yeah. will report that that can happen. Um, so one of the things I like to tell people when they don't feel like they want to go to the gym or they're like, ah, I'm tired. I don't feel it. Do the warm up whatever your warm up is and then see how you feel. Uh, you know, I feel a little yep. bit. Okay. Do the first work, first exercise. Okay. I feel pretty good. Okay. So do everything is prescribed essentially. Right. Especially when we're talking about RPE. Like if I say, Hey, do a set of goblet squats at RPE eight, three sets of eight. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter if that weight was 80 pounds or 60 pounds. If it felt like an RPE of eight, We have created a training stimulus and you're going to improve. And so it's a nice thing that you can play with when it comes, you know, obviously, especially with golfers, you know, unlike powerlifters where we're like looking for a certain number, although we're still going to use the RPE scale. I'm like, Hey, you know, you hit 550 last week on your deadlift. Maybe we're going to look to hit like 560, but still needs to be an RPE eight. Um, To me, that's, it's so helpful. So, so, so helpful. It is. And then you can use that in your round too, right? You can, you, if you get to the tee yeah. box and you're like, wow, that, you know, on the range, I just kind of wasn't feeling it. I, I did loosened up a little, but uh, let's see how it goes today. Maybe you lower your expectations for the day and just, you know, enjoy it a bit more or something like that. You know, it, 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 that, that concept is a great one uh, that you bring up because it applies to a lot in a lot of areas. Yeah. And for, when it comes to golf specifically, and this is for me, someone who obviously picked up golf later on, the range before isn't overly helpful for me. No. Like when I get no. to the range, like I, I don't really like to do any of that. I I'll go chip and putt. I'll yeah, chip and dude, putt and I make see, sure that make sure I'm warm. Mats, that's it. Yeah. If I see mats, I'm out. Cause that's going to, oh, dude, I, it messes I see with mats me. on the driving range. It's over. So the driving range is that's right next to my house. It's next to the course that I play all the time. They have mats and then they have like their fake grass, which is, you know, kind of like their thicker rough that you can hit out of. Yeah. I hit the ball right 90% of the time off of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then I go on the course and it's, um, I'm perfectly fine again, but I don't know if it's a mind fuck or whatever it is, but it screws me up to hit it off the mats. So I'll chip and I'll putt and I'll warm up with like some faster swings and things like that. Otherwise, I'm not bothering in any way, shape, or form with the driving range. To your point, if it's got a bunch of mats. If it's grass, that's, no. a, that's a different story. And even then, I'm treating it as, okay, I'm going to take my pitching wedge, find a target, hit it at it. If it goes to it, it goes to it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm just trying to see if my body is a little bit warm and ready to handle the golf swing. I could also just go out there and do, you know, 10 goblet squat or 10 squats, 10 push-ups, you know, world's greatest stretch, and five vertical jumps. Swing the club hard. Or go. swing the club with increasing intensity five times. That would take me all of a minute and a half, and I am freaking ready. Yep. Yep. Love it. I love it. So it's my end of my TED talk. What else we got on the stuff? What else do we got? What else do we got? I got my golf balls in today. Hell yeah. What do you you said vice, right? What do you what well, which I'm, I like I like the so um I'm I've been fiddling. So I tried the Vice Pro Soft, which is certainly not designed for me based on how I swing a golf club, but I like to, you know, try them out and they were free 99. So, you know, it's a big, big you go, right so anyways, so I, I have, uh, I've done the vice pros, which I like, and I've got the vice pro pluses. So I'm actually going to go out and hit both of them and just kind of see what I think I've used pretty much every ball at this point. I've used the pro V one, the pro V one X, uh, the Kirkland's, the Callaway's. I like the Bridgestones, the new Bridgestones. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm a fan yeah. of, um, right. I got to tell you, 
I super dislike paying a lot for golf balls. Like it really bothers me. It's, <laughs> it's just like a, like I'm paying as much for 12 golf balls as I do for a round of golf. I know. Like I just, I know it, it, it pains me in so many ways. So a lot of times I'm the jerk that will go on eBay and find like the mint golf balls, like the, like unused golf balls, you know? So instead of me paying 30 bucks or 30, 30 to 40 bucks a box, I might pay like 24 bucks a box. Yeah. They're essentially the same golf balls. They're just a little bit cheaper. Like I'm, I don't have it in me at this time to just buy new golf balls all the time. And buying in bulk yeah. is my, my go-to. I want to buy, oh, yeah, you know, a hundred to 150 golf <clears throat> balls and, or, you know, buy five boxes, six boxes, seven boxes and should go from there. Yeah. I got six boxes in my trunk right now. Uh, oh, this is a good story. This will be our finishing story. Everyone can appreciate this. So Monday, Monday we play in a golf tournament, right? And so it was me, uh, a buddy of mine who invited me, or a buddy of mine and then two other guys. One of the other guys was one of the big sponsors of the event and invited me down. Uh, shout out to Vintage Gentleman. Anybody watching this wants to get some like cool mm. leather goods, cigar goods? Vintage, I am, I am his first purchase ever in like 2015 or 16. I bought my diamond decanter that I have out there. Carrying my nice. delicious Blanton's bourbon. Mm. Nice. Fabulous. So, anyways, he was one of the other guys. So it was the four of us, and we're out there, we're out there playing. So, first of all, Monday down here was like 58 degrees, 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts, 20 to 25 mile per hour winds, cold and rainy. Miserable day, right? I felt like it was negative 20. I was like, I'm not from Maine. I, I, I'm doing a disservice to my lineage. And how much, how cold I am right now. <laughs> so anyways, we get out there and we're playing. And really, my buddy and I were the only two that hit decent golf shots. Like one of our guys must have lost 30 golf balls at least. At oh. least. Like nothing was straight. Like I think we used two of his shots maybe the whole day. It was a scramble, right? So tough course, tough course in St. Augustine. Um, so I think we had, I think we had four birdies. And I think I made three, something like that. That's right? that's tough in a scramble. That's real tough. tough. Yeah. So we go into the clubhouse, right? And so two guys took off. They had to go get their kids or something. So we're sitting there and they had like a taco dinner after with churros that were delicious. Oh, mm. fantastic. that was a good, I liked it for a little post tournament dinner to have like a taco bar and churros winning yeah, combination. Man. Churros are awesome. Oh, so good. So we finish up, we're sitting there eating and they're doing like the, it was for a local classical education school. So they're talking about the school and what have you. And so like, all right, let's talk about like the people that won and the awards they get. Right. So they go through first place, second place, third place. A guy got a hole in one. So he won a bunch of stuff, whatever. And they're like, and also we have a gift for the team that finished last. Uh Oh, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, four birdies. We're probably in the, bottom five. Oh yeah easy easy I played in, in three scrambles five. i played in three scrambles last summer that our lowest score was 10 under or our, yeah. our highest score was 10 under we every other one we were more than 10 under yeah yeah like i'm like four now mind you it was a miserable day so i don't know how far yeah. behind we were like maybe four there was like a four and a six and like 10 sixes and mind you yeah. they only let us play to par you could not bogey yeah. a hole so that made it a little trickier because there's a lot of holes where, you know, people could have like tripled or something and they yeah, just, yeah, didn't. Yeah. but nonetheless, so they announce our, our name or like our, one of the guys in our group and I'm just like laughing. So they're like, here's, uh, you know, three boxes of golf balls because I'm sure you guys probably lost a lot of golf balls. Well, there's only two of us right there. And so the guy gives them go. to us and, and the guy that was with me was the one who sponsored the team, the guy that owns Vintage Gentleman. And so he just hands me two boxes, like 30 golf balls. He's like, hey, here you go. It's like, here's your consolation prize. It's like, yes. Score. I played decent golf. I walk away with 30 golf balls. Hey, and some delicious first, churros. What's better? If you're if you're not first, you're last anyways. So <laughs> that's right. That's right, Ricky Bobby. That's right. Ricky Bobby. All right. Um, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got too. Sweet. Cool. Good talk. Uh yeah, we'll talk next week. Yeah, we'll do it. Anybody needs anything, shoot us a message. Jackson or at jackson.golfstrong at tim.golfstrong on the Instagrammies. Uh, 
that's pretty much it. Nothing crazy. Sure, some message if you need anything. Send us some fun stuff. Also, get ready for USFL betting. Will be oh, yeah. your go-to source. Your go-to source for USFL betting. Golf Strong USA. Someone's got to be Stu Finer. Do you watch? Uh, do you watch uh, Sports Advisors at all? Stu Finer's the goat. Yes. Yes. I. I, I know. I can, maybe it'll be you. I feel like you fit that role. I mean, I'll embrace it. I'm not gaining. I'm not gaining sixty pounds in a belly, but I'll embrace. I'll embrace the stew personality. <laughs> yeah, it's the personality. It's not. It's not the look. Ready to roll. Ready to roll. <laughs> we good? Yes. I'm about I think it. That's it. I'm about it. I'm about <laughs> it. All right, everybody. We'll holler at y'all later. Peace.